All right, this video is going to be on these, um, these, what is that, I guess, three tobacco tins, <clears throat> each from uh, the early 20th century, all probably from, I'd wager around the 20s, I guess I'll start with this one. Uh, these were all my grandmother's, uh, my grandmother's mother's, so I guess my great-grandmother, who I have unfor I unfortunately never met. Uh, my grandma was keeping them in her uh, in her place, but she was doing some clearing out, and uh, this wound up with us. So this here, this one is a Just Suits um, by, what's that say? Uh, Butch, Butchanen and Lyle. Ly Ly Lyle, yeah. Butchanen and Lyle, B-L. Uh, New York, NY, USA, trademark right there, uh, just suits, cut plug, and right there, if you look close, actually it's not on this side, uh, there's the side of it with the little seal, smoking and chewing tobacco, and the back, or maybe the front, you can see that it's uh, definitely seen the years. Little spots of, I'm not really sure what that's from. It was sitting tucked away somewhere for a while. Cut plug. So these would have held tobacco about a hundred years ago. <laughs> Which, that, that always makes it sound more impressive. Instead of saying it's from the 1920s, you say how long ago it's from. Oh, this is one that still has some of my great grandmother's buttons and such in it. I'm not really sure when these buttons would be from, actually. I haven't looked inside here in a bit. It looks like it might be kind of old. La, la mode. La mode. Choice of smart women for more than 80 years. Guaranteed washable made in Japan. So that might be old. I have not looked any of this stuff up. These are just some of her old buttons, I guess. She never really used. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know when these buttons would be front that. The bottom in here might actually be I doubt it, but it might actually be the original bottom to the tobacco box. Yeah, probably not. That might be a stretch, but yeah, that's interesting. I'll have to look into that some more. Here's the top. It's got this nice little handle. <laughs> Works well still. Uh, most of this is fairly faded and just covered in sort of set dust. It doesn't seem like it's going to go away. Uh, certainly nothing's showing up on the camera, really. Um, but you can see the seal there in the middle right there. Logo, just suits, and on the bottom, cut plug. And there's some writing here that even with my naked eye, I cannot make out. There might be something there, I'm really not sure. Now I did find this online. Uh, this particular, I found all these boxes online. I don't know why I'm out of focus. I'm snapping at my camera, that's not working. Um, so you could find one in one of these in better condition, certainly. All of these in better condition, probably. Uh, but, you know, it's still just interesting to look at. And I'm still not in focus. It's supposed to be an autofocus camera. All right, uh, sorry about... There was a little cut from the video there. Um, something wrong with my camera. I've decided to turn my light on since my uh, overhead light, my fan, needs to be changed. It's needed to be changed for about a year now, I'd say. Um, the light might help, but yeah, you still re can't really make much of that out. Moving on. Oh, whoops. Not moving on yet, because this, uh, like the other one I have over there, still has its little um, pipe I guess that's to rest your pipe on, either maybe while you're putting the tobacco in, uh, maybe just to set your pipe down while you're smoking. 
I'm not positive. Whoops. <laughs> this one uh, folds down and such. I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that. It probably is. Um, but, yeah. Pretty neat. Now, moving on. This over there. Nice background for the camera shot. We've got Wild Fruit uh, Flake Cut Tobacco. Uh, Bagley's Wild Fruit. This, I think, is actually a bit older um, than the other ones. Uh, just from the wear on it. And also from, I found one online, and it seemed to suggest that it was older than the 20s. More like the 19 zeros or the 10s. We really don't have good names for the 10s or the zeros, do we? Maybe they'll fix that next century. <laughs> so on the front, we've got uh, Bagley's, or Bagley's, Bagley's Wild Fruit Flake Cut Tobacco. Uh, you can kind of make it out through the camera there. Um, that says smoking, that says chewing. So they have smoking and chewing. Uh, manufactured only by John J. Bagley, Bagley & Co., Detroit, Michigan. Side, and it has red all across the um, you know, lip to the to the lid, <laughs> which looks good on um, better conditioned boxes. Not that I'm unhappy with this; it's just you know. And this has oh, a little warning right there, which take that down. Turn this sideways so that I can read the warning. Uh, factory number six, uh, first dist, probably district of Michigan. Notice, um, the manufacturers of this tobacco have complied with the requirements of law. Every person is cautioned against, uh, cautioned under, um, the penalties of law not to use this package for tobacco again. So after you've smoked all the tobacco that comes in this package, do not put your own tobacco in the package. I'm not sure what happens to tobacco if it's improperly packaged, um, but apparently they didn't want to risk it, so they put a little warning on there. And this was Union Made, this tobacco, um, for smoking and for chewing. Let's see the back. Looks about the same as the front. I don't see any difference there. Bagley's Wild Fruit Flake Cut Tobacco. Smoking, chewing, uh, made, manufactured, not made, <clears throat> manufactured only by John J. Bagley, or Bagley, I really don't know there, um, and co. Detroit, Michigan. And then there's the other side. Bagley's Wild Fruit Tobacco Union Made. Here's the top. Yeah. About the same as the side. Flake cut. There's the inside. This one doesn't have a handle. I can't really make anything out in here. I'm not sure if there was anything on the inside, but yeah, there it is. And on the bottom, actually, this is interesting. Since none of the others have anything on the bottom, it has some kind of a... Ooh, try and get it at an angle so the light's not in the way. Um, a stamp here, which I'm guessing would be some kind of a tax stamp or something. It's mostly worn away. Uh, I can just make out something like Union there on that uh, banner. <laughs> you can't see that at all on the camera. Yeah, th there you go. You can kind of see Union there, something or other. So I assume that's some kind of legal or tax stamp of some kind, but I'm not positive. Again, there are better versions of this that can be found online. You just have to buy them. <laughs> so if you can go online, buy a better version of this, uh, not a better version, a better conditioned version, uh, with the stamp. I'm not sure how many of them have the stamp. Tell me what that stamp means. And this was actually inside of the wild fruit one. Uh, this is not a tobacco thing. This is one minute headache powder. 
um, in tablet form from the Rexall Laboratories, distributed by United Drug. That's right. Uh, the famous United Drug of the 20s. I mean, not just the 20s, but they're, they're famous for existing in the 20s, I guess. <laughs> 24 tablets. So these are pills to cure headaches or colds, I guess. Um, take each tablet. Oh, sorry. Each tablet contains acetane, acet acetanilid, one half grains. Don't know what acetanilid is. I probably don't know what the modern term for acetanilid is either. Um, a quick and efficient emergency remedy uh, for relief of the discomfort of simple headache and neuralgia. <laughs> neuralgia. Here's the back. Guarantee. We guarantee this prescription uh, to give satisfaction. If it does not, return it to the store where you bought it and get your money. Get your money. And it actually has a little thing written here on the inside. So that's where your pills would have been. Uh, one minute headache powders direction. These headache powders are made in tablet shape for accuracy as well as your convenience. Simply put one tablet on your tongue and by drinking one half glass of water, uh, they almost instantly disintegrate into powder um, and are then easily swallowed and begin their action at once. If necessary, a second tablet may be taken after an interval of one hour. The excellence of this preparation is ensured by our scientific use of selected qualities of acetanilid, aspirin, and caffeine. Probably the aspirin and caffeine are what actually make you feel better, but that's interesting. You don't actually swallow the pill. You put it in your mouth, you drink a glass of water, you wait for the pill to dissolve in your mouth, and then you swallow the solution of the water in the pill. Neat. Uh, now this, I assume, is from the 20s, based on United Drug Company, um, and also, you know, its age. I have found some of these online. I have not found a date or anything. Set that down there. Our last, well, not last box, but last tobacco box. This one is actually in pretty good condition, as you can see. Pedro uh, Cut Plug Smoking Tobacco. And I guess their calling card <laughs> is the uh, Jack of Spades. Which, look at, look at the way it's designed. You know, with little tiny J's on the side and not much of a barrier to the edge of the card. Not how they're made anymore. That one might have been... Nah, I don't know. The model for that card might not have been made in a you know, big factory where they just print everything on like it is today. Some home card store or something. Though I'm not positive. This also, I believe, to be from the 20s. Uh, smoking Tobacco, WS, WMS, Kimball, and Co., the American Tobacco Company. They're the American Tobacco Company. Huh. Uh, incorporated successor, and there you can see it, patent applied for. In the bottom corner there. The side. There you see a, uh, a pipe there, sort of with an eastern design around the sides here. When you look back at um, a lot of stuff from the, the tens, maybe early twenties as well, you see a lot of eastern inspired designs, especially for tobacco, oddly enough. I've got a bunch of um, old tobacco ads and stuff, uh, scrapbooked. It's also an old scrapbook. <laughs> that I got from my uh, grandmother. And they're, they're always saying, this is the, the Turkish tobacco, the Persian tobacco, that type of thing. So you can see a bit of a hint of that there with that design. Here's the other side. This one has the factory number. Uh, District of Virginia. Notice the manufacturer of this tobacco has complied with all the requirements of law. Every person is cautioned under penalties of law not to use this package for tobacco again. Oh. Well, that's the same um, notice that was on the uh, wild fruit tin over there. Alexa made a noise. Um, so I guess those two are from around the same time. I didn't notice that on um, the, the Just Suits 
It might have been on the top, though, and it's just too faded for me to see. But that, that suggests a rough time period, or a similar, a shared time period, rather. Now that looks kind of like, this is the, um, you know, the pipe rester. That looks kind of like an opium pipe or something. Some kind of, you know, oriental something or other. Barrett with the same design. Some kind of plant or water or cloud. A lot of things look floofy like that. Plants, waters, and clouds. Uh, but yeah, it's a neat design. Here's the top. You can see here some a hand in a game of poker or something. What's that? We have an ace, a queen, a king, I mean a jack, a king, a, uh, a ten, and a five. The five's a bit out of place there, but that's a, that's a, um, that's a small straight, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't know what the five's for. Cut plug, smoking tobacco, oh, Pedro. Some more neat little designs. There are some flourishes. And it's got this pattern along the edge. P, probably for Pedro. Another P, also probably for Pedro. <laughs> P. And P. So the design on top of this, um, this, what was that, Just Suits, probably used to look something like that. But as you can see, you know, it's faded over the years. This one here, really amazing condition, I'll say. Handle missing, but, you know, can't win them all. And it also opens to the side. That's where the handle would have attached. <laughs> I'm not going to close it all the way because it's kind of hard to open from that, but there we go. And this here, I'm actually not sure what kind of box this would have been. Maybe a chocolate box or something? It's made by... Look at the bottom. It's actually got it on the bottom here. Gina and Co. New York. Jenna, maybe. G-I-N-N-A. Uh, which I've looked up. It is some kind of a manufacturing company. And this is a Christmas-themed box. We're looking at the back right here. Santa Claus is coming, and you can see him with his uh, Christmas trees riding in the sleigh, the reindeer. Maybe it was a clothing store of some kind? That could be it. And this was a button box, maybe? Did they sell buttons in boxes? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, here's the top. It's actually upside down. I'll look at the side first so I don't have to jump all over. There's old Saint Nick. <laughs> his beard and jolly face. We have the front. Merry Christmas. Merry Xmas. <laughs> He's on top of a roof there. This reindeer going down the chimney. <laughs> this I believe is also from the 20s. Maybe, maybe a bit earlier, maybe a bit later, but around that time I'd say. Maybe 10s. That'd be neat. There's a, what do you call that? Like a cornucopia thing there, full of toys, and a stocking with a doll in it. And up top, the image is a bit harmed, but you can see some people riding in on a carriage, not a carriage, a sled, drawn by horses. There's some kind of a chapel or something. It's like a nice little scene from a small town that someone has, probably a child, maybe even my mom or my grandmother, when they were little, has messed up a little bit there. But yeah, neat box. So there's all the boxes from this video today. We have this um, Jenna and Co. We have Pedro Cut and Plug. We have Wild Fruit Tobacco, uh, featuring One Minute Headache Powders from Rexall. Um, and we have Just Suits Cut Plug. Uh, yep, that's it.